Hello. Today I'm going to start a video series based on some requests that I've had from my students in the past. Um, and I think this is an important thing because lots of uh, kids and grown-ups too, I guess, get art kits for Christmas or their birthdays. And it comes with a lot of stuff inside of them that kids don't know how to use necessarily. And so my students come to me and, you know, what the heck do I do with this? And if we're not covering that that semester, then I might not get to it as quickly as they would like. So I'm going to start a series based on what the heck do I do with this. So today we're going to talk about pastel. This is a pastel. There's pastel and oil pastel. This chalky one is the one that came first. Oil pastels came much later. Um, this one is a soft pastel. As you can see, if I put it on my hand, it makes a mark really easily. It's very soft. Um, the other kind of pastels that are out there are, they're called new pastels, they're called Conti crayons. Um, they're much harder than the, the regular soft pastels and therefore I have to push on my skin very hard to get any kind of um, color on my hand. But the good thing about them is because they're hard, they're they're really nice for fine details, and because these are soft, they are better for um, roughing in an image. So today, I am going to make a drawing of a place that I once was um, when I was in my 20s. So this paper right here is, once again, it's cardstock. It's tinted. It's pink. Um, because the picture I'm drawing is also tinted. And it is going to be of a desert. And this particular desert had something I'd never before seen in my entire life, which was a volcanic neck. And to me, that was the strangest thing ever. You could have a volcano and part of it left over after the volcano itself was gone. And I thought that was so interesting. Of course, at the time when I saw it, I didn't know that's what it was. I said, ooh, look, mountain. And I got out of my car, pulled over on the side of the road, and um, took a picture of it. And the story about taking that picture is actually really funny and sad and a little scary at the same time. Because I pulled over on the side of the road on the interstate, which of course you probably should never do and climbed under some barbed wire fence to take this picture that I'm drawing right now. So I was laying down when I took this picture, trying to be all professional out there, taking photographs in the desert in Arizona, while cars are driving by thinking to themselves, what the heck kind of CSI stuff is happening right here? She dumping a body? You know what, just keep driving, we don't wanna know. Well. I kind of got what was coming to me because somebody does not understand that wildlife also likes to live in places where there are, you know, deserts and beautiful scenery. And while I was squatting down or really kind of crawling around on the ground like a weirdo taking this picture, um, a huge massive insect crawled up my leg. I don't know what it was, but it must have been at least six inches long. Okay, so here's something else about pastel. You can blend it, unlike my recommendations for pencil. So when you blend pastel, you can use your finger, but I like to use a little piece of napkin. You can use a tortillion too, which is a rolled up piece of paper, but I don't like the way they sound, so I don't use them. So back to the story. So I had this six inch bug on my leg and I get up and I start yelling, because apparently the weirdness effect wasn't strong enough that day. And I start yelling about this bug being on my leg and I swat it off. And it did not bite me or hurt me or do anything like that. But because I was a huge fan of the X-Files, I thought that the bug secretly bit me without me knowing and that in any moment I was going to become some sort of alien, doomed to wander around the desert, for the heinous crime of jumping a barbed wire fence 
and taking a picture on the side of the road in Arizona. So something else when you're using pastel, so let's go over materials again because I just kind of started the drawing. You need pastel. I have some new pastels here. I have a piece of tissue and I have some hairspray. So what you're going to do with the hairspray is lightly coat what you just chalked in. And the reason why you do this is because hairspray is just sprayable glue. You can use workable fixative, um, which works, but I think it stinks and smells terrible. And, you know, why use that if I can just use some extra strength hairspray? Um, and I will tell you, the best hairspray for this, in my opinion, is hands down Aquanet. It's cheap. You can get it almost anywhere. Gas stations will sell it sometimes, especially truck stops. And it's just super strong. It holds really well. It stinks, I think. Even the unscented one stinks, but it works. Okay, so notice that I'm using the entire piece of pastel. I'm like turning it, flipping it. That sounds like a commercial for that stupid bop it thing. Like what, what even was that? If I want to practice like flipping some toy around and like hitting it. Like, I don't, I don't feel like I need a toy for that. Like all of your toys can do that. You can flip them over and hit all of them. The bop it is not special. It thinks it is though. Only with this, because we make bright lights and jittery noises and you know, reward you with, I don't know, music for doing it correctly. All right, another spray. So this is, this is how sometimes pastel will work. Notice how it's not, it's not coming off of the page at this point. It's because it's being glued down. So you build it up in layers. And if you slowly build up layers, instead of just chalking in a super dark piece you know, full force. Um, it looks much more natural. This is not the purple I was looking for. You are not the purple that dreams are made out of. You are the purple that uh, 1980s um, trapper keepers and uh, gas station coffee cups have on them. Also those Bien Fang sketchbooks have that same kind of purple on them. Ooh, and with the pink, now it's complete. Now we're moving into Lisa Frank territory. Not hating on Lisa Frank. I wanted to be her so bad when I was a kid. I should make some Lisa Frank drawings. I don't have an airbrush machine, though. This looks like a muddled up God knows what mess. Like, what even is this at this point? You can't even see it. You're like... Is this supposed to be something? Yes, it is. And hopefully, it will be something in the next two or three minutes. Otherwise, I'm going to be very annoyed, but not surprised. Okay, so I think that's all my base colors. Yeah, that'll work. <sighs> all right, spray, spray. Okay, now that I have most of my base colors in, now I can start putting in more detail. So on this particular day, the sun was setting over these mountains in the background and it was so cool looking, which is why I pulled over and tried to capture it and instead felt like I was turning into some sort of uh, alien. I don't know what all that was about. I don't know what I was so scared of. Well, I know what I was scared of. I was scared because I was watching, you know, scary TV shows late at night. Okay, so that's that. A um, little secret about chalk pastels is that the white is often one of the best colors in the box because it puts down so much intensity. And you get this nice subtle. That's not subtle, I don't think it's subtle. Okay, why am I drawing sticks in my sun? 
Um, I cannot get the pastels I want into my hands quick enough. And now we're gonna just move on to Conti Crayon to do the details. See how it's harder and I can get a much finer line? I guess you could sharpen your chalk pastels, but first of all, that would feel gross. And then second of all, well, they would like get dull like an instant after you finish that. And this was this is what I pulled over to see this picture right here. Because it was so interesting to me. Because where I'm from, um, there are no roads. I'm just joking. That's that's a Back to the Future line. We have roads. We have a lot of bridges, but we also have roads. So it was just very scrub brush and very dry and something so elegant about this place on the side of the road on I can't even remember which highway it was a dark desert highway I think there was cool wind in my hair that's not true that's Hotel California and I was not in California I was in Arizona and then there was this cool tree right here. I don't know what it is with trees, but I love how just they wave their hands in the air and they, they really just don't care because they are trying to get to the light and they're gonna do whatever it takes to do it. And the nutrients and there's something graceful about that, of course. Um, I'm not the first person to notice that trees are graceful. I'm not even, like, good at describing how graceful they are, because I am not a, a poet. I can make some pretty decent limericks, though. Most of them are appropriate. I've made a few of them about Hitler, for some strange reason. They're kind of funny. I guess I should tell one now, now that I've got everybody wondering. Uh, there once was a man from Berlin whose mustache was incredibly thin. Um, everyone laughed at his silly mustache, so he started a war, but didn't win. <laughs> That's so dumb. <laughs> that is not the right color. And that is my Hitler <laughs> limerick. I wrote another one in court because I got a traffic ticket. Sitting in court isn't fun. I'd rather be out in the sun. But I got a ticket, and since I can't fix it, I'll pay the whole fine till it's done. Writing limericks is a great way to pass time in, in the courtroom. Because you're just kind of standing there, smiling to yourself. But well, you're not standing, you're sitting quietly. While well, the judge is telling everybody how they're a failure in society, and you're just kind of smiling. Why are you smiling? You're in court. I thought of a funny limerick about Hitler. Do what now? I feel like I just pu published my first limerick. Now it's out there for everybody to see and use. Um, I don't know what's going on with this smoky green tree, but it has gotten clearly off the rails. Because now that my mountain, it's not a mountain, it's a volcanic neck, is getting lost. And there was like another barbed wire fence. I'm glad I didn't go to this barbed wire fence, because I mean, Whew. If the side I was on had the six inch bugs, I mean, what would this have had? Like a 40 inch bug. You know, and it wasn't even the bug's fault. It was my fault because that's what you get for like, ew, what did I just do? Stop that. I'm putting you down. Like as in, you're not a good 
uh, what are you, pastel. Do so basic, you're a 10 on the pH scale. That's a put down. And, um, yes, sun. Get some color on you, even though the sun is not. Um, this is starting to look messy again. That's the other problem with pastels is that they can look messy real fast. One more spray. And I think I'm like almost done here. Why do all my trees look just like this? Like, if you go back to the video on drawing a quick landscape, you're gonna find that the tree looks just like this. And it's on the same side. I'm gonna have to start making sure that I stop doing that. Okay. Um, yeah, so this was, uh, this was where I was at in Arizona.